a lot of kind of boring boards. I think that we'll focus today on um, um, on some competitive auctions. Um, there were a few of them, and uh, they have, can have a tendency to get a little wild. So let's take a look at them and see if what we could have maybe tried to pull. So on board two, we have a situation where we can, um, the auction is going to the game level. Um, and what we want to do is, as we take a save, we're not the strong hand here. We want to make the opponents try to guess whether they need to bid over us. Uh, we have the diamonds, they have the spades. And what will happen here is um, I pass in the south seat with five diamonds and eight points, nine points with this, this heart. And my partner bids two diamonds. Now, what we'd like to have on a two diamond bid is six when we're vulnerable. So it looks a lot like we have 11 diamonds altogether. Okay. Are they in the mood to be making four spades? Well, I could bid three diamonds here and find out. Um, and uh, if they bid on, I would, I would guess they are going to have something. I have eight, nine. My partner has 10. So we got 19 points. Right? If, if they can make spades, it's going to be on the basis that they're short in diamonds. Right? They're going to basically have their, their um, 20, 21 points um, all in three suits, right? which is a game. That's how you make game with 20, 21 points. You don't have the fourth suit, which they won't have here. Maybe one diamond loser if they're playing in spades. If I bid three diamonds here, um, we can see them go on to three spades. They're going to pass. Um, do I want to let them play three spades? No. So I could bid four. Now what I'm going to suggest is that there's another way to go about this, right? And that is to take advantage of, oh, I should just stay here, not, is take advantage of the fact that we know we probably have 11 card suit, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bid game, okay? So I pass. Right? I got two aces. I got a void and spades. We got 11 trump. I don't think we need to worry about spades at all. They got at least, uh, my partner may have four, but I'm short, right? So I got two aces, an ace in a side suit, an ace in the suit that he's bidding as an overcall. Why not? Right? We're playing imps. Bid five diamonds. Now, I'm going to stop right here, hopefully. I've watched the robot screw this up before. Right. Um, they won the, on the first trick was a spade, and they won the, the king. That's the only spade trick they'll be taking. They switched to a diamond, uh, all well and good. And I'm going to go about trying to set up. Notice two diamonds fell there, so we had 11. It's all over. Um, take the ace, right? Now, there, we had five, six of them. There's seven out, trying to make that heart last heart good. Um, what we'll do is we're going to want to be taking advantage of these multiple entries and counting these hearts as they fall. There goes the king, right? So if the queen falls, we already have that. So keep playing rough and high, leading back high, so that you have enough entries to pull this off. We got the ace of clubs over there too. And there's the queen, so now the jack is good. Right. Jack is good. Ace of clubs is good. Eight of hearts is good. And of course the diamond is good. Board three, I, I just wanted to discuss this auction a little bit. It's something that, that, that you'll find as you advance that, that better players do, right? Which is um, when to bid a four card major as opposed to your diamond suit. Um, South starts with the club 
And we have 10 points, although the jack of clubs is sort of meh, and the heart is only going to be good if our partner happens to have hearts, which is not our suit. So I'm treating this as a constructive hand, right? It's one that's going to get to game if my partner has a good invitational hand, but otherwise not, or better. Um, so the question is, do I want to bid the diamonds or do I want to bid the spades? Okay, and I would bid the spades here. I would not bid the diamonds. I, I, if I was invitational, if I was positive, I was going to take a second bid. I would start with the diamonds and then figure I could use some sort of method to find the spade suit. But on this auction, I would bid spades. Okay. All right. And we find a, a two spade contract. Um, whether I now know that we have a fit and now I'm upgrading my jack of clubs, uh, I've up, upgraded my hand here to being invitational. I want to make an invitational bid. It will have to be some sort of help suit. It really doesn't help to go one spade, two spade, three spades. This is going to make, it's going to be making based on um, something about my hand, the shape of my hand. Maybe a bad decision anyways. And then he goes to spades. And as it turns out, that was a bad decision. Yeah, spades cannot make... So we'll need help from, from, from uh, the opponents on this one. It's down one otherwise because we don't have any spade honors. So. so as we progress on our bridge journey, um, we start learning about the actual playing of the game, the strategy. right? And there are two main forms of scoring in bridge, which are imps, generally played in tables as Swiss teams, but on BBO we play a lot of imp pairs. And you'll notice that in out there in the real world, very rarely do you see anybody playing imp pairs. It seems to be this BBO thing. Now that's because imp pairs is kind of a fun game, but you need a computer to score it. Um, it's not easy to do the math. And when we started playing duplicate, there were computers around. I think if there had been computers around, we'd all be playing in Paris right now, and match points would have been a thing of the past. It's an ugly and often random and painful game. Um, but if you start playing clubs, if you play um, um, in tournaments um, online, you'll see that you're playing match points, and there's a big difference in strategy. Now, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but we're going to talk about one of them um, because it works out well on this hand. Um, at match points, you are you're scored on your rank. Right? Okay, so it doesn't matter if you beat somebody by 1,100 or you beat them by 10 points, you still get a full point for beating them. And you get a full point for everybody that you beat and a half point for everybody you tie. They add that up, and then you are ranked percentage-wise. Okay? When you're playing imps, however, you're ranked by difference between your score and somebody else. So if you get 170 and they got 620, that's that huge chunk of change in between that is converted into imps and will look really bad on your scorecard. That's why we always say that you have to bid your games at, at imps. You can't, you know, if, if you're close, go, right? Good players will be there. Okay. It doesn't do you any good at all to be making three plus one. Okay. And you can make um, you can make, if you're making game 40% um, of the time and then going down in the others, no big deal. The difference between going down one and people making 170 is 120, right, if you're not vulnerable. And the difference between bidding 170 and watching people get 620 is enormous. So you bid your games at imps. You don't bid your game. You don't worry about it quite as much at match points. The other thing you don't do is worry about balancing as much at imps. At match points, you will balance all the time, right? Because you, if they're making 110 and you can get out for down one vulnerable, that's 100. That's a 10-point difference, okay? Instead of being negative 110, you're negative 100. And that's a huge difference in scoring. So we balance a lot in match points all the time. It's one of the things that will make you crazy about, about match points. But in imps, it's not necessarily the same, right? Because if they're making 110, and right, then you're negative 110. And if you're going down one, then you're negative 100, right? So the difference between negative 110 and negative 100 is non-existent at imps. It literally, you get the same score, right? The problem is if you balance aggressively, you're going to get doubled sometimes, even at imps, 
and when you take that that 500 that 800 uh, you're going to you're going to have this huge imp swing that was unnecessary it was because you felt compelled to balance so we balance much more with much more uh, consideration at imps or at least we should so here's a hand uh, this is board four where this comes up right i have six seven eight nine this is not enough to overcall two diamonds um, at the when i'm vulnerable so i pass And they bid two spades, and they bow out. So, right, they got like 19, 20 points, and, and we probably have about the same. And I have this five-card diamond suit. And the question is, should I balance? Okay, or should I double, right? Um, at match points, I'm going to bid something. I'm not going to just let them walk out with two spades here. If they have a fit, we must have a fit someplace. Um, and I probably would just bid three diamonds and uh, see what happens. On this hand, I'll bid three diamonds and I will get doubled. Okay. Um, if they're only making two spades, that's plus 110. If they're making three, if they get an overtrick, that's 140. Right? If I bid three diamonds, ah, they doubled last time I played it. Um, or maybe it got doubled at the table. That's what happened. The table, um, somebody offered up this three diamond bid and it got doubled, right? Now, if you go down one, right, instead of being minus 100, which would have been okay at match points if they were making, if you were minus 110 because they were making, right, you'd actually do better. So the balance makes sense. But here, if I go down, I'm now going to, I'm in, I'm, I'm vulnerable. If I go down one, doubled, right? it becomes 200. If I happen to go down two, it's 500. So now I'm taking a huge loss. I could have gotten out for negative 140, but now I'm getting out for negative 500, right? And I'm being scored on the difference in between. So on this hand, I would not double. I mean, I would not uh, bid three diamonds. Instead, let them play two spades. You know, they make what they make. Um, here, um, let's see what the board result was. Just down one. Um, so long as they don't lead badly, I'm going to be down one. Down one is uh, 200, right? I was going at, I was going out at maybe negative 110, negative 140, and probably lots of people were, but I managed to find a way to turn it into negative 200, right? Which is 80, 90, 90 points or 60 points. It's going to be two, three, four M's, right? If it happened to get worse, right? If I made a mistake and took it double, now we're talking a huge swing, for absolutely no reason except for you felt you've been told to balance. Always balance, you know, always balance. No, especially at imps. Balance for good reasons, not for bad reasons, and there was no good reason to balance on this one. Okay, so on board six, we'll return to the theme. Um, should we be competitive auction? How high did we go? Um, South starts with a diamond, and I have an easy overcall, right? It was spade. I've got six of them, and I've got 11 points. I've got a pretty decent hand, right? Partner bids two spades. Seems like we're in a fine place, and we'll leave it at that. The double here um, over the, this shows the other two suits, so I'm not even sure that they have a fit at this point. Um, so I'm going to pass... And North is persistent, he bids a club. So he's got a club suit, and South returns to their diamonds. So, hmm, do I bid three spades? And there'll be people out there say, well, lot, law of total tricks, right? You got, we know we have nine of them. We should be at the three level, right? Well, we're vulnerable. And if we go down, that's 100 points, right? If they make three diamonds, if they happen to scratch out three diamonds, right, that's... Uh, 20, 40, 60, plus their 50, that's 110. So literally, if we go down one in three spades, it's negative 100. If they make three diamonds, it's negative 110. I don't see where there's any value to be bid in spades unless you're convinced, absolutely convinced you're making it. So I'm going to pass. I mean, it, obviously, they have some awkward situation here because of the, you know, the double and, 
and uh, South didn't bid again, and then North offered up three clubs, which is probably um, five or six at least, and and then they ended up back in three diamonds. Um, does not look like a strong auction for them. Um, I'm going to start with the spade, and we have, if my partner has three spades, right, if he has three spades, and I have six, that's nine, one in north, and we've got three spades in south, which means there's two more spades over there to be had. Um, but I got to get rid of Trump first. I shouldn't say there's three necessarily, depending on what my partner has. There's a p potential for two more winners. Partner has the king of diamonds, right? I catch the, we catch the king. We ca sorry, we catch the jack of spades. Play the ten of spades, right? And they're down, just like that. So, instead of going negative, we went plus. Only plus 50, but certainly plus 50 is better than negative 100 or negative 200. Um, as it turned out, uh, two spades makes, but three spades is down one. So, by choosing to play some defense here, uh, by choosing not to follow a nursery rhyme, but to consider the strategy of imps, it doesn't make sense to go further.